It was a warm summer night in July back in 1988 when me and my friends were playing in the woods. We happened to come across some cabin and were about to go in. The cabin was like something out of the movies. It looked so cool to us and we were wondering could we use it as a clubhouse. Suddenly we heard something, like a monster's growl, and we ran to the back of the cabin. We froze in terror as we had a view of a man dressed as a clown, going crazy. We hoped he wouldn't realize we were there, because if he did, we were certain he would kill us. We waited for what felt like hours. When we were confident the crazy clown was gone, we started walking home. But before we could even move away from the shed, we heard a strange voice from behind us. When we looked behind, we saw what looked like two girls. We ran and ran and ran. I keep having the same recurring nightmare of me and my friends going in to that cabin in the woods. And when we are inside looking around, the door closes bang shut behind us and we are locked in with the mad crazy clown. It is now 10 years later, 1998 and we decided to go back to those woods camping. We lit a fire and were talking to each other about what it could have been. One of my friends said it was probably just some crazy drunk dressed as a clown after being at some fancy dress party or something. But I said, what about the girls? What is the explanation for them? We relaxed by the fire talking for what seemed like hours. Maybe it was because I was 8 back then, and I am 18 now, but I wasn't scared like I had expected. That is until I got home and went through my photographs I took. When I saw what was developed of the exact spot the girls were in, I froze in fear. It was a huge face of some man with eyes peering through the trees. I can clearly remember taking the photograph and all I could see was the trees. I couldn't process what I was looking at. I wondered was that an evil force that had taken those girls. I felt a shiver run right up my spine and I felt like crying. I felt guilty for leaving them there. Then suddenly I heard a noise outside my door. I was afraid to open it from what I just saw in the photograph. But when I did open it, I almost fainted with shock. The two twins were standing right in my hallway, staring at me. They kept staring and staring, and I felt like at any minute they were going to attack me and kill me with brute force. But they just smiled a little and walked away. I knew it was their spirit letting me know they were okay. There was nothing we could do. They were walking in front of me, looking back every now and then. As the years went by, they got older and appeared again. I could hear the voice in my ear saying, Help us. You have the connection. Bring us to your world, please. Help us, please. I never saw them again after that. It was the summer of 2000 and me and my girlfriend were camping. She told me that she had great news. I asked her what it was. She told me that she was pregnant with twins. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. Jake was a journalist for a national newspaper. 
there was a huge news story about a big shot businessman, Matt Rice, who was suspected of killing his wife Irene. He proclaims his innocence, saying that he last saw her going into the small maze in their garden, and he never saw her again. Jake wondered why he didn't even try to concoct some different story that sounded more believable. There were a lot of conspiracy theorists online, of course, as usual, with any case. They all have their own theories about what happened, but Jake knew that he had to write the story properly. He had to drive to Matt's home and check out the property himself. Luckily, Matt accepted to be interviewed by Jake and was given permission to look around the property. Jake knew that he had to get a feel for the place, even though he was certain Matt was guilty as sin. When Jake arrived at the house, he was impressed by the beautiful big door and the whole scale of the house and garden. When he interviewed Matt, he noticed Matt was nervous, playing with his hands and it was so obvious he was hiding something. Jake felt like just asking him outright, why did he kill his wife? But he didn't want to spook him before having a look around. Jake started to look around in the last place Matt saw his wife Irene, which was the maze. He walked into it and admired the beautiful green all around him. It wasn't even a big maze, so it wasn't as if anyone could get lost in it. It was ridiculous. The thought of it. But suddenly he felt a strange feeling, as his surroundings didn't seem to suit what it looked like from the outside before he entered the maze. The maze was small, then there was the gravel and garden. That's what he saw. That's what he knew he definitely saw, but none of this could answer for it. He thought about turning around and going back, but he kept going. He felt a strange unease, so he had to turn back, but when he did he was shocked to see it was just all a big long forest. He felt dizzy and felt a strange presence. He felt shivers run up his spine. The more he walked, the more disorientated he felt. It was almost like a strange force was in the woods and taking control of him. He looked up to the sky and all he could see was trees. He kept walking and walking for what felt like hours. He couldn't help but think, is this what happened? Matt's wife Irene? Was he innocent after all? Did Irene get lost in the woods like he is? He looked through the trees and realized the moon was in the sky and it was night time. Then a few minutes later the sun was rising and within minutes again the moon was back. He felt like he was going crazy. He couldn't take it anymore. How could it go from night to day in just seconds? He took out his phone to make a call but there was no service. Jake was getting tired now, but he needed to keep going. He had to write this story, but realized that if he wrote what he was experiencing, people would not believe him. He could just picture his editor joking, asking was he on magic mushrooms or chancing his arm trying to scoop an interview on a paranormal show on cable TV. Suddenly he felt a strange presence, a presence he was familiar with, a presence he wasn't afraid of. It's different than what it was in the woods earlier. This presence made him want to keep going, keep searching for the truth. Jake thinks of them many times. He was embraced in Irene's arms where she cries to him telling him that her husband says he feels invisible because she doesn't give him any attention. Jake knew that if Matt realized his wife was having an affair with him, he would go crazy. Suddenly Jake nearly jumped out of his skin with fear, shock, but mostly love. 
Right in front of him was Irene. He found his love, his true love, but she was so sad looking. He called out to her, Irene, Irene, what's wrong? But Irene couldn't hear him. It was almost like she was in another dimension or an alternate reality right there in front of him. Then it finally hit him. He feared he would never be able to share his story or Irene's. He wondered how her husband did it, but knew that this was karma. He looked into Irene's eyes. He wondered where she was and wished she would come back to reality and see him. Was she feeling exactly the same way as him? He wondered how long this would last. Then suddenly something even worse happened. She walked through the woods while he walked by her side, holding her freezing cold hand. Was she dead, he wondered. This should be beautiful. This should be romantic. He knew, but instead it was a horror story he couldn't even have dreamt of. He was walking through the woods, holding hands, but not guiding her, but her guiding him, without even realizing it. He not only felt invisible, but was invisible to her. It was a sickening reality, and the worst reality he didn't want to face was, when would it all end? He looked up to the sky and could see the trees and screamed. But it didn't make a difference. Irene didn't even bat an eyelid. He kept walking with her until finally Matt walked up to her. She smiled and asked him, did he see him yet? Matt said, not yet, love. It takes a while to them change. He is going through to the other side now, but we won't see him until he has crossed over fully. Jake couldn't believe what he was seeing. Matt said when he sees it through the fog, he will walk up the steps to the other side. That is exactly what happened next. Matt smiled and said, Jake, if you're listening, if you're out there, yes, you were talking to me when you were alive. Or should I say, when I was alive. But I have found a way to conjure up an evil spirit. All I had to do was kill myself to that spirit take my soul. But what I got in exchange was you, dead, and the other side. And yes, my wife does love me, and always loved me. And you didn't believe my story. Why didn't you believe my story? If you did, then none of this would have happened, would it? But then again, the story doesn't end until it's all okay. And if it isn't okay, then it isn't the end. But Jake, don't you worry, because when you get to the other side, everything will be okay, because it will be the end. But Jake, when it is the end, just remember, what comes next is the beginning of a new story, and this will be mine. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content.